Okay, so I was bored, and I had this terrific idea of if I replaced Sora in KH2, could I beat the game? I thought of using T Mod to change my character into someone else. So I started with Riku. Riku is technically a playable character in the game for about 10 seconds in the final boss fight. You can't play as him anywhere else in the game. And the short answer to this is no. Riku cannot beat the game. The first time the game busts in this is right in this section. So, four feet into the fucking game here, and it just it crashes right there. So, and I tried it again just to be sure. And same thing, crash. And basically, that would be the entire run with Riku, just trying to run through areas would be crash after crash. And that's stupid. So we'll just do bosses. That's more controlled, and I can save state and load state back to a place to keep the game going. But let's get into it, and we'll go boss by boss, and some of it may not technically be a boss on your list, but it'll be a boss for me. So, the real question is, how many bosses in Cage 2 can Riku beat? It's time to find out the answer. Now, the first boss on this list is going to be Cypher. And, while technically really not a boss, I just kind of, this was the first fight I wanted to test this with. And I learned later that you could turn party members off. But, as you can see, I do not need them at all. I would have whipped Cypher's ass six ways from Sunday. So, uh, yes, Riku can beat Cypher. Moving on really quickly from that. Next up on the boss list is technically the actual first boss of the game, Twilight Thorn. <coughs> and this is where things start to uh, take a turn for the busted and weird. So, usually at the beginning of this fight, as Roxas, you would start out, like, pinned in the air. And apparently, because I'm Riku, Twilight Thorn will skip most of his animations until I'm on the floor. I'm not entirely sure where Riku goes during all this, but he reappears after Twilight Thorn smacks his invisible ass, and then he goes under for the, you know, normal third part of his reaction command shit. After the usual wait time for this reaction command to start, Riku decides to T-stance for a literal millisecond before the reaction command actually starts, and... This dude does not have a ball of energy anymore. So eventually he sucks me into nothing. And finally, after all that, Twilight Thorn is so enamored with Riku's ass, he gets in a close-up before he runs away. And then the fight actually begins. After Riku takes a couple swings at Twilight Thorn using Roxas's voice, he's finally able to land a hit. And apparently he hits Twilight Thorn so fucking hard, he breaks him. So he is stuck in whatever this position is, which just makes it completely easy for Riku to finish him off. And apparently Twilight Thorn doesn't have that much health anyway, even if you don't do the reaction commands, because he does not survive these hits for very long. So yes, Riku can beat Twilight Thorn in a very stupid and messed up way. Next boss we got on the list after Twilight Thorn is Axel 1. And at this point, I still didn't know how to turn off Donald and Goofy. I learned that way later. But Axel is the first boss to actually get some fucking hits in and do some damage. But he takes so little hits to kill from Riku that it feels like Soldier of Godric lasts longer. So Riku easily defeats Axel 1. And immediately following that, I use immediately very lightly considering that it takes a very long time to get to this next fight, is Axel 2. Back to back Axel fights, and this time we're in the Ring of Fire, and this will be where Dual Wheel Roxas shows up. As Axel puts his pizza on the floor, me, Goofy, and sometimes Donald, being very passive, beat the living fuck out of him. And this is where I figured out that revenge value does not exist with Riku, at least for enemies that are supposed to have it. Because at some point, Axel was supposed to break out of some of that, but for some reason he didn't. And that's kind of going to be a theme with a lot of this. Some bosses find a way to get over it, and some don't, but yes, he can beat Axel too. Next on the list, after a long time running, you will get up to Shan Yu. And Shan Yu is where the shit starts to hit the fan. Now, the way Shan Yu works a lot of the time is anytime you get a parry on him or block one of his sword strikes, you will enter a state that's a reaction command. Now, you do that with Riku, he gives up on the fight, skates across the floor, and tries to assert dominance from a very long distance away. And Shan Yu does not care at all. He will sit in his bubble and be stuck there. 
as the Heartless continue to pound the door until it is broken. That's when I learned that this reaction command cannot happen unless you do a ground attack. So I start doing jumping attacks with Riku, as inaccurate as they are, at least I'm getting hits on it. But I'll tell you, these jump attacks do little to no damage, or Shanyu doesn't care. And I end up asserting dominance a little too hard, so I gotta restart the fight again. This is also when I learned that for some reason, Donald and Goofy have stagger ability, which they do not have in the original game, which does make fights easier, and as I learned at the end of this fight, they are actually able to end the fight themselves. So does that skew this a bit? Kinda. But I don't really give a damn. Riku can beat Shanyu. Next up on the boss list is the first boss of Olympus Coliseum, Cerberus, and I'll just let you see how the fight with Cerberus starts. To be honest here, I'm really not entirely sure what happened, um, because if you look back, when Cerberus first jumps at you, no one has attacked him yet. For some reason, bigger bosses, like, you know, uh, giant-sized bosses with Riku, tend to get frozen when they get hit. Not entirely sure why, but it only usually happens when somebody actually hits the boss. And in this case, no one did. But since Riku put the curse of Rigamortis on Cerberus while he was still alive, it makes him an easy target and makes this fight pretty much as simple as possible. Not really what I was going for, not the way I'd like to fight the boss, but I have a much worse fight coming up next anyway. While technically not a boss and more of a minigame, I still do like to call this Dimmix 1, and it technically is still a fight with whatever Dimmix is summoning. And with this fight, I meet the first roadblock put my way in this game. So the beginning of this seems simple enough, I'm basically one-hitting these clones, and technically that means I'm doing it better than Sora. Um, so really there's no point to use the reaction commands, because if you do, this happens. You try to assert dominance on them, and obviously we know that doesn't work in this game, nobody gives a shit if you T-stance or not. But the thing about T-stancing is if an enemy is able to actually hit you, then you get knocked out of it, so that continues the fight. But the problem here is, Riku stops being able to kill these water clones after you've killed 20. So, with no reaction command usage, and no way to kill them with physical, and Donald and Goofy not being able to kill them either, there's nothing I can do here. No matter how many times I hit these things, they don't die, and that basically puts it as an unwinnable fight for Riku. So after Dimmix comes the actual biggest challenge of this world in maybe the entire game, Pete. Now, how the hell could Pete be the toughest in the game? So, there's nothing too off-putting about this first part, where you have to protect Meg, and you know, until Hercules gets back. This part's actually pretty simple. Um, just kill the Heartless, uh, hit Pete. Nothing too different or wrong compared to the fight with Sora. This shit just runs on a timer, so eventually this part of the fight will end, and the second part of it will begin. One thing I do have to say about this phase, though, Meg is a damn champ for this part. She takes some massive fucking damage from these Heartless. So eventually phase two starts, and that's when things really go to hell for all the wrong reasons. So I just go straight in, screw it, and crash. The game crashes, okay. Don't know why, I have a save state, restart, all right. I gotta redo the beginning part, but I'll make a save state for the second part now that I know it's liable to crash. So the next time I get to the second phase, I just run around and survey what the hell is going on, wondering why the hell it crashed. And after a while, I just go in for an attack and, you know, whatever. And... crash. Again. I'm starting to see a pattern now, though. So let's just do it one more time to confirm why the hell I'm crashing and why it's so stupid. Right. Okay. So apparently, whenever Riku jumps... On his landing, the game will crash during this fight. I jumped plenty of times in the first phase, but in this phase, it crashes the game. Okay, well, whatever. That just means I don't have to jump attack. As absurd as it sounds, I can't jump attack, I'll just ground attack. Would you believe that is like the fucking hardest thing to do in this game is to not jump attack? It's so goddamn hard if there's enemies in the air to not jump attack. I mean, look here, I'm fighting the ghost, and my target switches to the bat for a millisecond. 
And that's it. That, I can't help it. It's That's the end of the fight. The moment I'm in there, it's over. And you know what doesn't help either? This fight is AIDS by itself anyway. Pete's ball hits you for a massive amount of damage, the ghosts hit you for a massive amount of damage, and I can't fight anything in the fucking air. So at this point, I start thinking about ways to indirectly damage these Heartless, because there is no way I can go after Pete until these things are dead. So luckily, Hercules is in this fight, and his shield repels the projectiles of the ghosts, so I start using that against the ghosts, and if the ghosts are on the ground, I'll hit them as carefully as I can. I have to be sure that when I press the X button, whatever I'm targeting is not in the air, and that includes Pete. And what also doesn't help is that sometimes when you do the reaction command for Pete's ball, and Hercules is too close, the game fucking crashes too! And funnily enough, if I'm forcefully knocked into the air, it doesn't crash! It's only when I purposefully jump myself! So really, in this entire fight, Hercules is quite literally my sword, and quite literally my fucking shield. So after way too many deaths and crashes to count, eventually I'm able to get both Trick Ghosts killed, and then I'm able to wail on Pete, and never press the RC when there's another RC next to this ball. Because apparently, whether it's Hercules' RC, or the Bat's RC, it crashes the game if he's too close and I spam triangle. This fight literally had everything. Even a fucking rock killed me once. And so far, I haven't even mentioned that you're timed on this. And the only reason I haven't done that is because it's the least of my problems. It only stopped me from killing Pete one time. Because I either crashed first, or I died. After what was probably about 40 or 50 fucking minutes of me doing the same shit over and over again, eventually I was able to whittle Pete down enough, have the ghost dead, and not jump and hit the bats while I was killing him to actually finish this fight. This will more than likely end up being the hardest fight that I'm actually able to complete in the entire run. So after the shit show that was Pete, we have a nearly equally as weird fight in Hydra. And as expected with all the gargantuan-sized bosses, the moment Riku makes contact with their skin, they become paralyzed. But the funny part about Hydra is that his tongue sticks all the way out, and it would make Gene Simmons blush with how long it is. So I hit him enough to get in the reaction command state, while Donald apparently is losing most of his body every half second. And I find out, unfortunately, that this reaction command does not work. Um, no matter what angle I take, no matter how many times I press it, and I can spam the, the triangle button too, um, it doesn't matter. Riku will appear out of thin air after doing it, and the Hydra's head will never get cut. While I was looking for a way to somehow beat this fight, I did realize that Riku had some new moves. I can go invisible and, like, reappear in certain areas, and, you know, it just, I can walk around invisible. It doesn't really do anything for this fight, but it's good to know that I can do that. I'm not sure what effect it'll have on bosses later, but... I did try once to cut his head off while I was invisible, and it, uh... It crashed the game in an odd way. The music kept playing, but the game was frozen, so... Also, using another new move that I learned with Riku, I was able to do this. And, uh, yeah. He fell through the map forever and ever. If I had some type of magic like Sora has Thunder, I could actually kill him through the ground, but, you know, I would still have to do RCs for this boss because he's special like that. So, in the end, Riku can't beat Hydra. It's a soft lock. Whatever. Moving on. After moving away from Olympus Coliseum, we go to Beast's Castle, and the first boss of Beast's Castle is Thresholder. And Thresholder is probably one of the more simple fights so far, and definitely one of the easiest. The whole fight was me, Donald, and Goofy just consistently beating the hell out of him, and uh, unlike Hydra, the RC here actually works, so I can get the ball out and actually do damage to the actual boss. So that was just rinse and repeat, and the only thing of note here really is that Goofy ended up stealing my kill here and getting the final hit on the boss, and I didn't. So, screw you, Goofy. Moving on from Thresholder, the next boss is... Beast, which this is actually a rematch from KH1 where Riku just one-shot Beast. It's definitely going to be way different than that. But Beast really doesn't even get any hits in, <laughs> so we just sit there and do the same thing we did the Thresholder again on. Only difference is, in this fight, you have to use Cogsworth's help. But the problem is, for some reason, Cogsworth's RC works, but at the same time doesn't. This is the RC where with Sora you would charge up like light and then shoot Beast with it to end the fight, and for some reason it like prematurely activates. And I can prematurely build up the magic or whatever to do this, and it just it doesn't work for some reason. 
but I finally did this after like five or six attempts of doing this triangle shit. It actually worked, and no idea why. It just felt like it, I guess. So, Riku can beat Beast with randomness. Next up, we go to the ballroom to fight the ball in the room. Uh, that's such a fucking stupid joke. Anyway, this fight doesn't really have a whole lot to it. Um, sometimes the RCs work? I can't even tell if this one worked. The one where he's in the pillar damn sure doesn't, but the one where he's in the chandelier, he kind of fucking comes out of it, right? Other than that, it's just uh, beat him to death until second phase happens. So second phase starts after this boy evolves, and... Oh, cool. A familiar face shows its ugly head. But, unlike Pete, with this glitch before, he doesn't have little floaty enemies above him. So, this is pretty simple to stay on the ground and just pound him until he's dead. After moving away from Beast's castle, the first boss of Timeless River is Pete, but this one doesn't make my anxiety go up because he's easy and is not the one that's in color. I don't think a four-year-old could die to this boss, so the only thing of note here that really happens is Donald actually gets a melee kill, which is probably one of the rarest things in existence. And because I love Pete so much, we get to fight him immediately after that for another boss fight, but this time he's on top of a fucking boat, so this is not going to go well, and I knew it wasn't going to go well before this ever started, because this is the most gimmick of gimmick fights in the game. So the immediate problem here is the reaction command doesn't work. I can't hit these things back at Pete with the reaction command. The next thing I try is manually deflecting shit. But that doesn't seem to work either because you can hit it once with a manual deflection, but when you hit it after that, it doesn't go back at him. Which is really weird. It just, it's it's all, all around weird for that. So Pete, driving about four centimeters an hour, escapes through the gate and I lose and I cannot beat this boss. And as if I didn't love Pete enough already, I get to fight him for a third time in a row. Luckily for me, this one's way easier than the last one, and I'm only going to recap by saying it's a shit stomp. It does not last long, and it does not matter. So, Riku easily defeats Pete. So after getting at a Timeless River in the Pete Festival, you don't fight a boss for what feels like forever, because it's not until the very end of Port Royal that you get to fight Barbosa. And let me tell you, this fight is actually kind of scary, for a reason that I completely forgot it could be scary for. Although I think for some reason this Riku mod is exacerbating Barbosa's damage, but he one-shots Jack and Donald. It wasn't even until that moment that they remembered that that fight would end if Jack died. So now really my main goal is trying to hit Barbosa before he's able to get a hit in on Jack, because the moment he touches him, the fight's over. And it felt kind of inconsistent because it was only like one attack that would actually one-shot them. If he did anything else, he wouldn't one-shot them, but that one just buries them. It's all over. It also didn't help that the Lantern Heartless would spawn across the room on Barbosa's side, like, every time. Hell, watch this time. I kill it, and Jack gets instantly annihilated. I didn't even have a chance to protect him. At the same time, I was keeping my distance, because I wasn't even sure at this point if that Barbosa attack could one-shot me or not, but I guess it doesn't really matter when Jack might as well be an extension of me when he ends my fight by getting killed. Eventually, I just got fed up with his shenanigans of one-shotting and decided to just air juggle him until he had no health. I would have liked to have seen the RC in this fight, but I also didn't want Jack to die to it for some unknown reason, so he died right before he was able to get the hit off. So Riku can definitely beat Barbosa, but Barbosa can damn sure beat Jack. After Port Royal, you go to Agrabah, and Agrabah only has one boss, which is the Fire and Blizzard Lords. Now, other than pointing out that these two dudes are about as much of a cakewalk as they've always been, the RCs in this fight do look a little funny, because you get Fire Lord spinning around in circles again. And the Blizzard Lord apparently stuck his tongue on an invisible light pole and got frozen there. Nothing really happens in this fight, besides their death. So now we go off to Halloween Town, and our first boss of Halloween Town is the Prison Cage, which I've always hated. Very much. And to be honest, I kind of hate him a little more here playing as Riku because Riku's air targets are really wild. So compared to Sora, I hit him way less. This is one of the very few fights in the run where the boss actually nearly kills me in a normal fashion. If it wasn't for Riku's apparent second chance and once more that I guess he has, I probably would have ended up dying here. 
But other than Riku's inaccuracy in the air and me having to hit these fireballs while wildly swinging at nothing, it's pretty much the same. As for the second boss in Halloween Town, we have the king of gimmicks himself, Oogie Boogie. That's right, away you go. When I said Pete was the king of gimmick fights, I had totally forgotten about this dude. And as you can see, this fight is already impossible. You cannot break the glass, you can't hit the boxes, you are fucked. The only thing of note I'll say happens in this fight is while I was trying to manually hit Oogie Boogie, which is impossible anyway because he's invincible, is I shadow glitched into his box and crashed the game. So, uh, yeah, Oogie Boogie's just got all the gimmick secrets. Apparently he can crash my game and not let me do the RCs. And we make our way over to Pride Lands where the first boss is the goddamn hyenas. The only thing I'll say about this fight is that I usually think this fight's pretty boring, so at least with Riku I'm able to beat the living shit out of them without them jumping out of my grasp, so I can commit animal abuse to my pleasure before they're dead. And obviously after the hyenas, comes Scar. And this fight as Riku is honestly kind of a bitch. Um, Scar moves very fast, you know, because you're not Lion Sora anymore, so you can't really keep up with him. In some ways, it's better to not be lying, sort of, to be honest, but against Scar, not really. Scar actually also really puts out some god-awful damage. Um, Riku's got a pretty fat fucking health bar, and he just whittles that thing down in a couple of hits. And when Scar DMs, the only way to escape his uh, move here is to jump over him. You can't outrun this thing. You can't curve around it. And it also fucking clipped me and killed me once, so that's the first natural death to a boss I've had. Also, sometimes when I reload save states as Riku, he will come back T-stance immediately. If you wonder what a lion sounds like when he's glitched, this is what it sounds like. Remember, remember that time in Lion King when Scar turned into a fucking jackhammer? It wasn't really until I watched this just now that uh, I realized that Goofy was the absolute undisputed MVP of this fight because he air-juggled Scar the entire time and it allowed me to get my own hits in so I could finish his fight. After Pride Lands, you don't fight a boss for a real long time, and it's a good thing because the boss here fucking sucks. Also, the boss spawning facing the wrong direction was a one-off. Uh, no other bosses did that the entire run. I don't really understand that. But getting into the actual fight, for some reason this guy kind of wants to be a big boss, but at the same time keeps getting knocked out of the freezing. So it just happens when I hit him and then he just pops right out of it. If this boss ever is able to hit you, he does still deal a massive amount of damage. The only other thing of note that happened in this fight is I accidentally did Tron's uh, limit, which I didn't even know was on, because I guess it comes on auto limit, and I pressed triangle, but you don't see your command board in this, so I pressed it, and when you do it, you kind of just run around. It's not very effective, and you can't really do it real well. But other than that, it's just a beat down slog until this boss feels like dying. And now it's time to meet another one of the hardest fights in the run. Demix 2. Now, from the fight where I had with Dimix 1, you would think this would be basically the same thing, but there's a couple of differences, and I spend way too much time trying to figure them out. The first thing that happens here that's different is when I do any jump attack with Riku, I get stuck in the goddamn air. I mean, I guess it's better than crashing, but it doesn't help me at all, and the only way I get out of it is something hitting me. And it's the exact same number as before, around 20 and then you can't kill anymore. So after about 10 minutes of tries where nothing happened, I decided to put my thinking cap on and approach this in a different way, just like I approached Pete in a different way. Since Donald actually has fire now, he can actually kill clones by himself. So I'm gonna have to put all my faith in Donald to somehow kill 30 clones before that timer runs out, after I kill 20. And if that sounds really stupid and foolish, it's because it is. Donald's AI is not smart enough, and he's damn sure not strong enough to survive any more than one hit. So this plan goes to shit pretty quickly. And that's not to say that he didn't get close, because he damn sure did a couple of times. A couple of times I even went in there and changed the way his AI works out, and it still didn't really do anything for me. He would just rush in and either die or would stick too close to me and not hit people. And looking back at this footage, I tried this for way too long, and it was probably the couple of attempts where Donald actually did get close that made me keep doing it, because I just needed to see if he was able to do it or not. But just look at how badly this duck makes me want to fucking choke him. It's just there, Donald. Move forward. If he just moved forward. 
And when I say that I did this for too long, I truly, truly mean that I did this for way too fucking long. This is probably, it was probably 50 fucking minutes of me waiting for this duck to do something good. That moment finally came when I was in a really bad spot. Because Donald finally got it, he finally got the combo that he needed, and I was T-stand, so I had to get hit to get out of it. Okay, well now my health is fucking zero. So if I take one hit from Denix, we're back to square one here. And can you guess what the fuck happens? At that point, I started questioning whether life was real or not, or whether I was stuck in a simulation that never ended. So after I waste 50 more minutes of my life waiting for this duck to do this shit that I've seen him do once out of like a hundred attempts, because I have so much going on in my life, and I don't have anything else to do better than this, Donald comes through for me in a way that I did not expect. I discover that my saving grace is an accidental button press that triggers the auto limit that I forgot that I even put on for Donald. Because for some reason that will kill the clones, but nothing else will. And look, at this point I didn't care too much. I was not letting this go anymore, I wasn't restarting this, I didn't care how I killed Demix, I started spamming the limit, I didn't give a fuck. I had gotten past the hurdle, I was not going backwards anymore. Without the clone gimmick, Demix isn't that much of a damn challenge anyway. So yeah, Riku can beat Demix if you find out the secret Donald fucking passcode. Moving into the back half of the game gives us some really odd boss encounters. The first boss that I go to after that is the Grim Reaper in Port Royal, and things with this boss get weird really quickly. And no, I'm not talking about his T stancing scythe cock. For whatever reason, he starts doing the RC that he uses in the second fight with him later in the world. And then after that, I end up underneath the goddamn Black Pearl. And I start falling through the map, so, uh, that's a reset. Like every other RC in the game, either Riku T stances or doesn't exist. But the funny part about it is you can't do the second part of the RC where you throw the scythe at the guy. And with this RC, you have to do it or else the fight can't continue because you can't damage him anymore. So I'll be under the boat at least once per fight, and that's dangerous. And this Heartless somehow realized my fear, because he teleported out there into the ocean. But since he can float, his ass ain't falling down, so the only way I can damage him is Donald's limit from this distance, without going out there and nearly getting myself killed. Eventually dicking around with Riku's massive jump height and long-ass air combos, I was able to get myself back on deck. But he's T-stance with his dick out, and I'm barely able to hit him to get him out of that. From that point onwards, I just beat on him until he feels like teleporting back onto the boat where I'm able to finish him off. Really weird fight, and I kind of dread the coming of the second part of this. And Grim Reaper Part 2 is about as shitty as I expected it to be. A little bit less glitchy, though. First immediate problem I notice is... I have to tap the triangle button to put the medallions in at 10 at a time. I know reaction commands are kind of fucked, but at the same time, it's like, that I didn't expect. Second problem, and the much more obvious one, is Riku cannot use magic, so I can't get the medallions out of this guy. Which means I'm back to depending on my party members to do shit for me. And after doing that with Demix, I'm not looking forward to that. After messing with what Jack and Donald use, I put these two bozos to work, and they do a pretty decent job. That is until while I'm spamming the triangle button, I accidentally activate Jack's limit, and that soft locks my fucking game. We just got this uh, massive wind orb in a box to nowhere at the bottom of it. So after turning the stupid auto limit off and going back in, uh, I'm able to get this guy into his original form, and that's where I witness the third problem with this fight that I'm going to have, and one that I should have seen coming because of the first one. Since I can't do the combo of the RC with the scythe, I'm only able to knock 30 coins out of this dude every time I do the RC, which makes it almost worthless for how many coins this boss will end up having inside of him. Now with that problem, that makes me even more dependent on Jack and Donald, and that makes this one long fucking fight, because I have to wait for these two to get up a lot. And Jack has the tendency to run right into the fucking whirlwind and get himself knocked out a lot, so that's real fun to watch every time he does that. Now the rare occasions where Jack actually feels like it and does it at the right time, his firebombs actually do a pretty good job of knocking the coins out of this guy. 
So really in this fight, I depend on Jack more than I do Donald, because A, Donald's knocked out more, and B, the only use Donald really has is healing Jack. Eventually I reach the third part of this fight where he does his DM, and I gotta knock 882 pieces of fucking gold out of this dude's asshole. And that takes a massive amount of time. And you know what makes it even worse? How about dying when he's only got 43 pieces left? Do you think that makes it worse? Cause I sure do. Lucky for me, I only end up doing that one more time and I'm able to kill this boss after 10 minutes of fighting him again. And man, I don't think a fight's gonna get more boring than this one. After going away from Coin Collector 2022, we go back to Gimmick Land, and if it's anything like last Gimmick Land, you know how this will go. Committing child abuse in this fight's not the problem, but hitting the box damn sure is because it's the same animation from Oogie Boogie's fight for hitting the box. So this fight is unwinnable. Moving on. I hate gimmick fights. I really, really do. For our next boss, we have the experiment. This fight's always pissed me off when I was playing as Sora, so I'd imagine it'd probably be the same or worse with Riku. Since he's a medium-sized boss, when he gets stun-locked, he has a T-stance, although for some reason it's more like a fucking upside-down L-stance for him. I'm not sure what's going on with that one. I guess his arms broke, I don't know, but <laughs> that's fucking weird. After hitting him for what felt like an absolute eternity, he finally goes into his second phase, and I get utterly annihilated by it. It was honestly pretty amazing how fast my asshole caved in when this dude went second phase. After that fight, some more weird stuff transpires where, while I make him T-stance, he apparently wants to fire his laser infinitely. And I find it funny that this is the only boss so far that while they're T-stance, they can still do damage. This also ended up soft-locking my fight, because in this state, for some reason or another, I can't damage him anymore and knock him out of this, so reset. The problem is it happens multiple times, and I'm not even the one doing it a lot. Donald and Goofy, since they both have stunlock powers, are able to do it too. So they can fuck the fight for me, and I don't even have to do anything. This boss also hits like a Mack truck very frequently, and Donald's always dead, so I can't get heals. So if I do get into the second phase, death usually occurs. What doesn't mitigate the damage is I can't do the reaction command when he separates himself, so I literally have to sit there, take the damage until he feels like putting himself back together so I can go into the second phase. And because of that, when he does it again, I just use Riku's bullshittery of getting through attacks and parrying the attacks to not take the damage. At the end of it all, the boss isn't too difficult, and other than a couple of soft lock scares and damage mitigation, it's just annoying. The next boss, and the only boss of Agrabah 2, is Jafar. Or it would be if Riku actually spawned in this fight. I could not get him to spawn. So, that's a fight I can't win because I can't even get Riku in here. I knew this was going to be a problem before the run even started because this is the only fight that takes place on the fucking carpet, and replacing carpet Sora with someone else just doesn't work 90% of the time. So I guess Jafar just scares Riku so bad he doesn't show up, so Jafar wins. And the boss following that one is the fucking hyenas again. And why couldn't it be this boss that didn't have uh, Riku spawn in? Because this boss is so fucking boring. It's beatable. It's easily beatable. But good god is it boring. To be honest, I'm not sure which one of these fights I prefer. I don't know if I prefer the one with Riku or the one with Sora. With Riku, he's so slow, he takes him 20 years to get to the next hyena. But since Donald and Goofy have stunlock, at least we're able to keep it from running away every time you hit it. Hard to even call this thing a boss, because unlike the other version of it, it doesn't even fight back. The next boss up is the biggest boss in the game, minus Xemnas' dragon, and that's Ground Shaker. And I'm not even going to say anything about this. You can just watch how this fight begins. Yeah, other than uh, Donald calling Riku Simba like three times in a row, yeah, nothing else is wrong with that, right? You know it's the start of a good fight when I'm locked into an animation, or the lack thereof, and have to take damage before I can even try to get hits in. And the hits with this boss don't stop coming there, because I cannot do the reaction command to get on this thing's back. It does not work. 
So, this boss is fucked. I can't get to the back, and I would tr die trying to get to the back. And for some reason, just like with Scar, I come back T-stanced. And now I'm skating around with my fucking T's out, and crash. I mean, I knew this boss was gonna be a shit show, but I didn't know it was gonna be this big of a shit show. Also, can anyone explain to me what the fuck hits me here? That shit makes the Ancient Dragon's hitboxes look generous. Well, screw that. I'm not the one for giving up so easily, so I'm gonna take my time with this. I figure out if I spam triangle enough before the animation kicks in, I can get Donald's Flare Force out. But, the animation still kicks in, and the only difference is I'm actually able to move around in it. So I don't have to take the damage at the beginning of the fight. But, Donald's also stuck inside of my fucking body. And the only way he gets out is if he dies. Plus, I got the good old sliding across the floor thing going on, like from Demix 2, and the reaction command freezes me. So, real good fight going on here. I really did try my damnedest to just kind of like hit my way up to the top of this thing, but the lasers that come down do way too much damage and spawn way too frequently for me to ever have a shot at doing that. Ground Shaker's got just too much shit going on for Riku to overcome, and that's two losses in a row for Riku. For two really different reasons. After the gauntlet of medium and large-sized bosses, I finally get a human-sized one in Zaldin. Now, for the first time in a while, I actually don't have much to say about a boss. At the beginning here, I was just going right through that windshield of his that is the fucking bane of Sora's existence. But Zaldin's soon able to get his wits about him, and it starts fucking me up. Or not really. It's really inconsistent. Sometimes I get through it, and sometimes it just destroys me. This is also one of those fights where Goofy's a Mega Chad because he stun locks this dude to hell and back over and over again with that shield toss of his. Now, when it comes to the reaction command, um, you can easily get the jump things inside of you. That's that's no problem. Uh, the thing is, when you try to do it, obviously, it doesn't want to work. Now, if you ever accidentally get any of these jumps inside of you, you better get them out of you quick because if you ever try to use them in midair, you will get locked in midair and probably die for it. I must be having some bad luck too because I keep having fights where I'm floating above the ground. This fight's actually kind of difficult for Riku only because the shield's very inconsistent on when I can hit through it for some reason. Like, I mean right there, Goofy was in there hitting him and I couldn't even get a hit in. This is also the first time in a fight that I've had Mickey actually appear for me. And I would normally not use him but I was curious how it would go and Mickey's about as useful as tits on a nun so... There was no point to him even being there besides giving me a second chance. And surprise, surprise, when I get a second chance, I'm stuck in T-stance because anything meant for Sora is not meant for Riku at all. So after getting shit stomped by Zaldin a little more, I get Mickey to spawn again in the same fight. I also didn't even notice until just now that Riku nopes the fuck out of there while on T-stance as Mickey comes into the fight, so that looks really stupid. And after getting up a third time, Zaldin destroys my health bar. A third time. Do I get Mickey the third time, though? Nope. But what I do get is a crash when I hit continue. I guess that's what I get for cheating. After that dumbassery, I'm kind of done with this dude because I'm tired of getting annihilated by his shield and wind. So I just spam Flare Force until this guy eventually wants to die. For our next fight, we go back to the Land of the Dragons, and we've got a mirror match. Kinda. It, it's kind of a mirror match. It's Riku Ansem versus Riku. Whatever. It, it's mo it's close enough. And this shit goes to hell really fast, by the way. I just find it so fitting that I play as Riku the whole game, and I T-stance in, like, half my fights, and the moment I fight Riku as a boss, the motherfucker T-stances immediately. Well, that was a little too quick of a fight, because I'll just finish him like this eventually. So let's restart and see what happens again. Oh goody. You know what that means. Crash! If you've ever played Kick the Can, that's what it'll feel like when you're fighting this boss. Because you will hit him and he will fly across to the other side of the arena and you have to go chase after him. I would say aim for a corner, hope he gets stuck there, and then beat the dog shit at him until he's dead. So the last boss in Land of the Dragons is Storm Rider. And just like every other large sized boss in the game, he gets stuck immediately. But unlike every large sized boss in the game, they can't turn into a fucking helicopter! I learned after watching this back that it's not even him doing it, it's actually Goofy spinning him around, which I didn't know was possible, but it does look fucking stupid. 
I go to town and the thorns on his back, but for some reason they don't break. I don't know why they don't. It's probably because it has something to do with them being stuck. But then I just go to work on his uh, horns there, and he ends up dying after a very long time of me hitting him. It takes about two minutes for his health bar to go all the way down. Man, this dude has a lot of health. And because I love the world so much, let's go back to Olympus Coliseum and fight Hades. That's it. Usually in this fight you use a reaction command to hit the balls into Hades, but since normal attacking is just as good, I use that anyway. And it works just as fine. But James Woods' favorite character is no pushover on the damage, because he will melt my health bar in a second. There's not really much to say about this fight, other than that he is a very scary enemy, and that 90% of this fight is running away from waiting for Donald to heal me because he is actually one of the more aggressive bosses in the game. As long as you're paying attention and you're cautious enough, dodging him's not a problem, and eventually you will be victorious in this fight. Our next boss is a two-for-one, because we get Sark and the MCP. Yeah, also apparently Sark wanted to make me a liar, because he's the only other boss in the game so far that's done this sideways shit. But following the sideways fiasco, I beat the fuck out of him just to get to the second phase. And since I'm greeted with large boss again, I have a pretty good idea what the fuck's gonna happen. Or maybe I don't know shit, because this was definitely not expected. <laughs> after finally catching up with Skater Boy, I said see you later boy and finally went after the MCP. After breaking the wall, I go for the reaction command and... It works, but doesn't? I'd imagine that it probably is the same thing as like the chest in Port Royal, where I'd have to tap it the whole time for it to work. The Ratch commands in this game are really weird in the way they interact with characters that aren't Sora. So it's kind of looking like this fight's unwinnable, and that's usually the case when it's the Reash command that needs to win the fight. What also compounds the problem is it crashes, too. After restarting the fight and getting the taste slapped out of my mouth by Sark a couple times, the next time I get the second phase, Donald and Tron yeet the fuck out of Sark and he goes into the nether realm and the game crashes. I do have a feeling with the way this Reash command works that every time I press it, I probably am doing one damage to the MCP. So technically this is not unwinnable, but I don't have the fucking time for that. So in the end, I'll say Riku can't beat the MCP if a sane person's playing the game. So we're finally done with all the Disney bosses, and we can move on to the world that never was. And the first boss there is Roxas. Also, this is the second rematch fight we've had in the game. Also, what I find funny about this mod is since Riku only shows up in the world that never was, he actually gets his voice back now that I'm here. So it's the first time I've actually heard Riku the whole game. Unfortunately for Rucksack in this fight, uh, Stunlock is his biggest problem, because I could probably do this the whole time and he would never get a hit in. But for the spirit of actually looking at shit, I lay off him a little bit and try to see what the fuck he's got. Riku can't dodge that move worth a shit, by the way. Since Roxas appreciated the second chance so much, he decided to T-stance me and tell me his favorite line of dialogue. After agreeing to take that, I used a move that I haven't used in a long time in going invisible, and it kind of screwed the fight up. It made my boy Roxas here go slow-mo. Well, either that or Riku's going so fucking fast, Roxas can't keep up anymore. It was actually kind of cool watching all of his animations going slow, because it's not like you ever really get to see this. Also, whenever Riku comes out of this mode for a split second, Roxas picks up his pace again. But apparently dicking around with him didn't end too well for me because uh, I get stuck in midair off a hit. So my fight soft locks off that. While taking a seat in midair while Roxas tries his damnedest to get to me, I find out I can spam voice lines. Getting back to the fight, I finally get this move to happen, and it does not end well for Roxas at all. I find it funny that I can even knock his model out of the animation and beat his ass during the in-fight cutscene. After I finally had all my fun, I just beat the fuck out of him until he's dead. Riku beats Roxac again. Our next organization member is Eyepatch Man, or Rob Van Dam, or Zigbar. This fight continues my favorite tradition of start the fight immediately with a reaction command kind of thing. And, oh boy, look at that fucking damage. So I go invisible for that, because during the invisibility you take less damage for whatever reason. 
And when you don't do the reaction command, this whole sequence takes like a whole minute. It, it's a really long time of just taking damage, waiting for this dude to get off his perch. During the fight after that, you find out how much of a stunlock god Goofy is, because he stunlocks Zigbar so hard that he T-stances him over and over again while I'm comboing him with him. Eventually getting to Gunman's DM. Dodging it does not go well for me. And it ends up in me dying. After the DM fucks me up a couple more times, I decide to try what I did on Roxas and see if invisibility does anything for this. Well, for this part of the fight, it makes Zigbar act like he's in the fucking Matrix because he starts slow firing everything and <laughs> it just looks overall dumb. For the final part of his DM, it actually does something really weird. It actually skips the end part of the DM, like he doesn't even do the big, like, shower attack. It just doesn't even happen. He just goes right out of it. And it's really dependent on the timing of it, because if you go invisible after he starts it, the, the projectiles still come in at the same speed. For the life of me, I could not get through this DM in any other way, so I just had to tank the fucking damage and hope to god that Donald would get up in time to heal me. Or I would survive long enough for Donald to get up and heal me. This fight kind of feels like I have to pull every trick out of Riku's bag to even have a shot at getting by it. Our next boss while going up the castle is the Prophet of Medic himself, Luke Sword. Even though that sounds dumb, I like Luxord Sword better, but hey, I'm not Numora. And surprisingly enough, this fight doesn't crash outright, because honestly, me changing forms into the dice, I would have thought there'd be a crash off that. The good thing though with Riku is when he goes back into his form, he gets all his health back. Also, Luxord's little mini game here does not work. It, uh, I can't press anything, and he just instantly jumps out of it, so not much I can do about that. One thing that happened in this fight is somehow I killed him before the time bar was even at zero. Which I had no clue that that was even possible. Because I thought that was his health bar. So I don't know if the game's lying or bugged. It might, might be both, I don't know. Also, remember when I said I was surprised that the game didn't crash when I became the dice? Well, you can't become the fucking card. Dice is okay, card ain't. I wanted to see this guy's DM once, so I started the fight again and tried to get to it without killing him, and I was able to do it. And since it's one of them animation ones, uh, Riku gets locked out of the card cage here. So I don't know how this guy can be very threatening when I'm not even trapped inside of his little game here. But other than spamming voice lines on the outside of the cage, I can't really do much and I get turned into a die while he just kind of sits there and watches me bounce around. Extremely easy fight, but also extremely weird. Next up in the castle is Syax, and if you've ever seen anybody Peter Pan kill this guy, you should know what's coming for him. But before we get to that, let's check out that oh-so-special reaction command. Oh yeah, that looks real good, doesn't it? I like sliding around the fucking floor, as if I didn't, haven't done that enough the entire run. You can also witness Goofy being a stunlock god yet again, because he's stunlocking him while he's in berserk mode. And that is basically not a thing. For what it's worth, he did kill me once, but that's just because I was trying to get his fucking claymore in my hands again and kept taking damage for it. I, I came to the realization that I probably should have had Don and Goofy turned off if they were going to be this good at stunlocking. And, and I'm talking about for the entirety of this run, just not just this fight. But it, we're way too late in it for that to matter at this point. Not much more to say about him, it's just a beatdown till he's dead, and this one's a gang beatdown. And Mr. Mansex himself, Zemnis. Now, with how much absolute buffoonery I know this dude pulls in every single one of his fights, I know there's going to be some dumb shit that's going to happen with this guy. Like, already, he usually does his little, like, curse orb on you and shit. I've already hit him. I've already bounced out of that. And look, I can keep hitting him while it's on me. Riku don't give a fuck. Eventually, I let him put it on me the right way, because I'm very, very curious on how this reaction command is going to go. So after asking me to come closer, that's exactly what I do, and I hit the reaction command. Well, nothing new here, I'm not there, and Zemnis isn't either. Okay, that is new. Where the fuck am- why am I taking damage? Where the fuck am I? I'm still taking damage, where the fuck- what's even happening here? And I'm dead. Okay. Yeah, alright. So apparently Zemnis takes a page on Riku's book here, and does not even go into his own reaction command, and we're just down there fighting on the fucking ground floor right now. Or, well, I wouldn't really call it a fight, because he's just destroying my ass. 
So the next time we do this, I just start jumping around and doing as much as I can to keep away from him as, you know, I'm hearing him try to attack me. But after that, he gets cheeky and does another trick from this run where I slide across the floor into my fucking death. One time I go slow-mo during this curse thing, and apparently while he's doing this curse, he's whispering sweet nothings into Riku's ear. Is that supposed to be the curse? I mean, I guess it works for Marluxia when he does it into your ear, but I didn't think Xemnas did it because I can't get a close-up on his mouth usually. Fighting this guy on the ground is actually a pain in the ass. You know, Riku's best combos come when he's on the ground other than his one air attack, but all of Xemnas' combos come when he's on the ground too, and his attacks hit like hell. Eventually, I don't even give him a chance to do the reaction command thing, and I just beat the fuck at him before he even has a chance to respond. I got tired of this fight real quick. And now it's time for the finale! We got Xemnas in all his forms, so I'm just gonna do this from the beginning and see how it goes. The very first obstacle in our way is a bunch of buildings, so let's see how this reaction command works with Riku. I said that went pretty well overall, um, other than me being behind the rubble. No, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Also, uh, not sure why I only have one party member and why the only party member is Riku, but we got double Riku going on. So I uh, go through the buildings that I cut down, and I'm actually able to make it through them, and a crash. Not surprising, but also, why when I go to the next area? Not why when I was cutting the buildings up and all the buffoonery was happening. This also means that Riku technically can't beat the boss, because he can't get to him. But uh, we'll, we'll keep going, because why would I stop? Moving into the next area, for some reason I have Donald with my Riku now, so it's not just a two-man show anymore. So let's see how this part goes. Obviously, with any animation, Riku doesn't show up, and it has to happen with him being invisible. So, uh, yeah, um, that's about the craziest one I've had so far, because I ended up underneath the floor in Nowhereville. I have no clue. I mean, I'm very far down below the, like, the, like, it's an elevated fucking building, okay? And I'm way below that. So I'm just down here in the streets <laughs> that aren't even real, but I can still stand on them. Hell, I can even stand on them and walk on them so much I can get back to where I entered the area and see the elevated building that took me up. An elevated building that's not even real anymore, mind you. I tried this a couple times to get onto the elevated platform before it rose up, doing like whatever I can, whatever Riku ability I could use to try to stay up there, but it would just teleport me right back down every single time. I'm just going to take this frame by frame so you can see what happens when I'm on this thing. Okay, the animation stops. I'm in the middle of purgatory, way beneath the city, so I'm not even up on top of the elevator. I don't know where the fuck it's got me. The other Riku's stuck in midair, Goofy's falling to his death, and then all of a sudden the camera just jolts back up to the street beneath the elevator, and I'm, I'm there in a split second. <laughs> I guess Riku's just not allowed on that elevator. And I try using Riku's insanely long air combos to just, like, kind of fly myself over to the, you know, Zimnus 2D picture over there. But, you know, I go beneath the ground, and eventually if you go too far down, it just teleports you back to the street view. So, I, I can get to just before the volcano area, I guess, before I teleport him back. So, Riku's 0 for 2 on these parts right now. Can he finally get a win with this stupid engine part? Well, immediate problem here is that Riku takes 200 years to kill these damn things for some reason compared to Sora. That's probably because I'm used to using Magnet. But when you use the stunt dodge, you don't do it, and the cannon shoots on you, but you just teleport right back to the same place you were at. Okay, whatever. I mean, whatever. I was kind of curious what would happen if you were still on the platform when it went off, and, uh, yeah. Uh, just immediate death. It's probably the same thing for Sora, just a little more dramatic. So I go back in, and I get the left side cannon dead after a couple of tries. But for some reason, the reaction command to jump off the cannon doesn't even exist. Which is actually a new problem I haven't seen in the whole game. The reaction command just does not show up. So Riku goes 0 for 3 on these parts, and I'm not, I'm not even going to show you the beating up the core part, because it, it, there's no point. If, even if it didn't work, it would just be him probably crashing, going through the gate to get to the boss. So whatever, let's just go to fucking Xemnas Armor 1. And if you think the problems stop there, watch this shit. Oh yeah, it's real good when the boss doesn't even want to fucking be a part of the fight anymore. And T-Stance? More like T-Sit! And you know what the messed up part about it is? Is I don't even have to be the one that does it. Goofy can do it to his ass! One time I died and had Mickey show up again for the second time in the run, and guess where Riku went? He ascended to fucking heaven! 
Okay, not really. He's sitting in the corner, but he was ascending to heaven. And you know what's cool? Mickey can do it to him, too! Everybody can send this guy to the fucking void! If you actually want to beat this fight with Riku, just sit there and ground combo him to death, because if you do anything in the air, anything that actually looks a little more fucking exotic than a normal hit, he'll go through the ground. Next up would obviously be Dragon Xemnas, but it's like the carpet deal, where there is no way to get Sora off this thing. So, and I even show you that the game shows that I'm playing as Riku. So, it's not that the code's not in, it just does not fucking work. So let's just jump right into the next clown show that is Armored Xemnas 2, and by god, is it a fucking clown show with this boss. So right off the goddamn bat, if the other Riku gets hurt, I get hurt. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fucking fantastic? This is the time to tell you where Riku's had a healing ability the entire game, but I have not used it because I didn't need to and I didn't want to. I wanted to keep the run pretty pure for that. But in this fight, it becomes a necessity very fucking fast with this double damage shit. And after I find out problem number one, problem number two arises the moment I hit the guy. He starts floating away from his spot. But don't worry, he's actually not floating away. Apparently what he's doing is orbiting around the fucking chair. So he makes his rounds every 365 days for me to be able to hit him. And what's dumb about it is it's a different rotation every time I hit him. Every time I restart the fight, he goes in a different way. Now he's going forward instead of backwards around the fucking chair. What is going on with this boss? And when I finally whittle him down enough and I get to the part where he launches us into space, that is where my biggest problem with this fight appears. I mean, there's so many things that go wrong here that I can't even explain them all. I mean, what the fuck is happening here? It's like the shield has a magnetation pull to it. I can't go too low or I teleport back up to the hole or to the shield. He's just tossing me around like a fucking hacky sack. What is happening? Before I'm able to figure out the answer to that question, I end up dying to lasers that I never see coming. And then when I restart the fight... Oh yeah! It's all coming together now! I mean, everything he does to you when you're out in space is disorienting. You get flung around, the camera gets flung around, you can't tell up from down, right from left. All of this shit is unfucking believable Eventually, I air-fuck my way over to a building and have the reaction command go on, and oh my god, it's a reaction command where Riku's actually in it, except it isn't me, so it doesn't technically count. And I'll tell you that trying to get back to him after that RC is one of the biggest loads of horse shit so far in the run. Unless you do it a very certain specific way, right before you get to the dragon's head, it will teleport you back to the fucking hole, so you gotta waste probably another 20 or 30 seconds getting back to the head. This was so fucking aggravating because of how long it took, and how inconsistent it felt on where I was getting teleported back at. It didn't feel like the same depth or the same distance every time it happened. Is it dropping in from right above him? Nope. Is it going in from mid front? Nuh uh. How about from his neck? Not that either. I turned turbo mode on because I could not stand how long it took to get back to this fucker. Because unlike Sora, I don't have glide. After around half an hour, I finally find a spot where apparently I can stand on midair and just ride a slide down to this dude's lair again. And it was just so fucking relieving finding that after so goddamn long. Too bad I gotta go out in space and do it all again one more time before I can kill him. And let me tell you, Riku's double health bar, as in taking the double damage health bar, is a pain in the fucking ass when I take all that damage and then laser beams start coming in because that's when it really fucks me. A few times I got killed out in space just because I was using turbo mode because I couldn't take it and the laser beam showed up out there at a random point in time. Finally, all the stars aligned, I was able to get back to him, and he was one hit. That was probably either the second or third hardest fight in this run. I'd still rather this fight over Pete. Minus the stroke camera, that can fuck right off. Well, here we finally are at the end of the game and final Xemnas. And I was kind of worried about the start of this fight because he grabs you and puts you into RC land, but uh, you can hit him right out of it. You can hit him before he even grabs you. So, <laughs> me and my Riku twin just put the hurting on this guy, and it, we put the hurt him on him so bad that he goes straight to his second phase. We don't even see the first phase. But doing anything about the laser beams with Riku is kind of ass. Um, 
there's not much you can really do about it besides try to jump over them or maybe try to hit a couple of them back. Eventually, in the first time I tried this fight, I had a crash that I'm not sure why it happened. It happened like the moment after my Riku twin hit him, so unknown, but keep on going. Next time I fought him, we messed him up so bad that he actually died. This was less than a minute long fight. I was so surprised I had to pause the game. I was like, did I really just kill him? Plus, I didn't even know he was actually killable before you did the, uh, you know, big ending reaction command kind of shit. So kind of disappointing, but let let's check out more of the fight just for shits and giggles. If there's ever a point in time where he gets to the can you spare a heart thing and he touches you with the electricity, the game will crash. Um, I guess th th it's funny that this is the only part where you're supposed to play as Riku and it won't even let me into it if I'm already playing as him. Eventually, I let him do the grab thing at the beginning of the fight on me, and he just grabs thin air. Nothing happens. You don't get thrown up. He still goes into the thing, and can you believe it's a fucking reaction command that actually works? No T-stance work. No fucked up animation work. It actually works fully as intended. It makes sense, because it's like the only reaction command you can use as Riku, or with Riku, so... <laughs> all the way to the end of the game to find one. After a couple more times where I couldn't spare a heart... I wanted to see if I could actually get to the laser dome at the end of this fight. The problem with trying that is he is so easily staggerable, and I can't see his health, so I had to make a save state where I thought he was getting ready to do it, and just keep loading it if I accidentally killed him, which I did about three or four times before I actually didn't do it to him. Well, disappointingly enough, uh, when I think he was getting ready to do it, or when he was getting ready to go into it, he froze and froze my game. So it just doesn't work. And I find this funny because I made a video of many, many years ago where I had gotten Lingering Will into the dome. Huh. Oh, oh, what? <laughs> but I can't get one of the people that's supposed to be in the dome in there. Two Rikus is evidently too many because it breaks the game if it tries to put two in there, so. Pretty disappointing for a final boss, but well, we still got the secret bosses left, so let's go look at them. Now for the secret bosses, I'm only going to look at absent silhouettes. I'm not going to do data ones, because data ones, while harder, have basically the same moves, and there's no added moves, so there's nothing more to see. So our first absent silhouette is Marluxia. And if you know anything about Marluxia, at the beginning of his fight, he gets real close to you, and for Riku, he smells his bicep. Um, for Sora, he talks to his ear, and for Sephiroth, he talks to his dick. Now, for the fight with Marluxia, obviously there's the death counter, where every time you take a hit, you go down, you reach zero, you're dead. But the weird part about Riku is he actually doesn't have to take the hit, is if the scythe touches him during a hit, it will take numbers off, regardless whether it's causing stagger to me or not. And obviously, reaction commands work, but not really. But it's weird that Marluxia doesn't exist in this one till the end, he just kind of teleports to the spot so the scythe can hit him. Like most of the humanoid bosses in this game, if I kept pounding on him with ground combos, he'd have no chance to retaliate because revenge value is busted with this. So, I give him a chance just to see what the boss would be like if this wasn't fucked. Really all that entails, though, is me letting him get to his DM, and this DM does not go well for Riku at all. Um, I go invisible just to see what happened. His pink shroud is still there, and when he throws the scythe at me... That thing just keeps on hitting, and obviously I cannot run it whatsoever, so it eats my uh, numbers away. Getting him into his last phase is actually bad for you, <laughs> because you just don't even get an opportunity to hit him most of the time. When I started over the fight and he did the shoulder sniffing thing, uh, I went invisible, and he went invisible with me. I guess he's really attached to my model at that point. The reaction command is also location-based, so it's actually different, and where, where he teleports to and from is different every time, because that time he teleported from the left, the earlier he teleported from the right. Not much to say other than that, go aggressive and eventually you'll beat Marluxia pretty easily. Up next on the absent silhouette roll call, we have got the Bookmaster Zexion. And this might be the most neutered boss that Riku has faced so far in the entire run, because his whole attacks and shit really revolve around him getting you into the book, and he just can't get you in there. It's not even that it fails or T-stands me, it hits me too. It just doesn't work. It doesn't fucking magically teleport me in there? No, it, it, he just can't do it. Riku's impervious to this shit. I guess it makes sense, because this is technically a rematch where Riku destroyed this fucker, so whatever. And I'm playing this shit from beginning to end, because this is actually only about a 30 second fight. It, I kill him that quickly. Without the book, he is absolutely worthless. 
And time for some more lore rematches, because this time we got Lexius versus Riku. And technically, Riku never beat this dude. Lexius beat him. He just died because Ansem shows up. Can Mr. Power Level do anything to stop Riku this time? Since he's a humanoid boss in this game? Fuck no. I let my ginger friend power up here, and weirdly enough, his power level like stops going up and then starts going up without the animation kicking in. And then he just goes into it, and obviously he can't grab you. I mean, shit, if Zimnus isn't allowed to do it, why the hell would this guy be allowed to do it? His DM is not scary in the slightest because of how many invincibility frames Riku gets in midair. I went invisible next time he, he did it just to see what would happen when he did it, and you can actually capture a little still frame of him coming down within it. He's no Radon, but he does make a pretty good light show. I also just get a close-up of him activating his fucking Bonkai, I guess. <laughs> just like the original fight, if you ever give him a chance to hit you when he's powered up, it actually hurts like hell and you'll probably die. But in the end, Lexius is a normal-sized human boss, so there ain't much he can do. And now we got Bitch Incarnate. Lark scene. And if you thought that this would be an easy boss because it's humanoid, um, absolutely not. This bitch fucks me up really badly the first time, and I just kind of flail around until I die. She's really fast. I mean, she's so fast, and she teleports out with her clone a lot, so I'm taking damage when I'm trying to give damage most of the time. And the first time I died, I didn't even notice that I knocked two of her clones out of that circle thing she does during her DM. I'd never actually seen that before. During most of the fight, I tried to stay in the air as much as possible, since that's where Riku's uh, invincibility frames mostly are. Did not work with how many hits she was putting in. If both clones ever teleport at the exact same time, you're going to be in for a world of hurt, because they do not stop hitting for an extreme amount of time. And if you ever get to the part where there's only one of her, and she does this attack over and over again, just like the original fight, it ain't gonna go well either. The best way I can say you could win this fight is try to stay in the air as much as possible to mitigate the damage that they put out, because the invincibility frames are always in the air. And in the end, the only reason I won this fight is because when they were getting ready to DM on me, I was able to trap one outside of the DM while the other one was stuck in there, and I was able to beat her to death while that was happening. Probably the most hard fight while being normal at the same time. And the last of the absent silhouettes is Vexen. So this fight always starts out with him trying to put you in an ice block. So how's that work with Riku? Um, he doesn't give a fuck, he just breaks right out of it. No fucks given. Now what I was hoping for that since Vexen has his shield, I wouldn't be able to hurt him so hard. Well, I can hit right through it. It absolutely does not matter to Riku. And most of like the normal version of this fight, the biggest annoyance in it is anti-form Sora. Although he doesn't really matter because whenever the, the bar of data goes up, He'll get called back into Vexen's shield, but since I can hit right through, he can't call him back out. So Vexen can't last that long in this fight. Now we're down to the secret bosses, and one of the only two in the game is Sephiroth. Now, this fight starts with Reaction Command, and... Yeah, I, I tried jumping, because I knew it wasn't going to work. Um, I ended up stopping the damage, but since I was in T-Stance, he had to hit me for me to get out of it anyway, so I might as well have just taken the full brunt of the Reaction Command. The rest of the first try was me flailing around in midair trying to get invincibility frames and then trying a ground combo and paying for it immediately. The next time the fight started, I was actually going to try to press the reaction command to see if anything good would happen. Talk about delayed hits. That puts those Japanese delayed reactions from sword strikes to shame. That was so long after I hit, I walked away then took 10 hits. That was so dumb. His fire pillar moves a pain in the ass to get out of. I, I tried invincibility through it, but it did not work at all. One time I attempted to go invisible before he did the reaction command, and instead of it happening really delayed, it's almost like I stored the hits inside my body, because when I came out of invisibility, they still happen. Just not as many, but they still happen. There really isn't a good way to deal with this first hit. I mean, you either get stuck, you store the hits, or you take the hits. And for some reason in this situation, I took the hits, had invincibility frames because I did an air combo when I took the hits. But eventually he's able to knock me out of the shit anyway, so I take a good bit of damage before I'm even able to fight again. And it really doesn't help if he does it again. And apparently one time he slashed my ass so goddamn hard that after I got all the hits into me, I got frozen in the air. If he ever knocks you into the air, you're basically screwed because there's nothing Riku can do in midair. It's not like he has aerial recovery. 
And probably for the first time all game, for a humanoid boss, I hit them with a ground combo and they actually break out of it. Obviously he's doing it because he's getting into third phase, but imagine if more bosses had a teleport mechanic when they went into another phase. And like Xemnas, we have another mouth mover when he's casting shit. It makes sense, but it's dumb to look at when you're this up close. I got him to the point in the fight where he wanted to do Heartless Angel, so I let him do it to see if it was just like Sora's, and it is. But him taking the MP away is absolutely worthless against Riku. I got him to do the uh, Meteor DM once, but since Riku's so good at staying in air, I was sitting here trying to hit him and basically didn't get hit by a single Meteor. So Riku's easily able to dodge this much more easier than Sora. I'd really like to know what in the living hell happened here, because he does the reaction command thing twice. I pressed it while I was T-stanced, and when I died, my screen was completely white. <laughs> I don't have a clue why the fuck it was like that. Coupled with being able to teleport out of your combo, and his damage, Sephiroth is actually one of the more dangerous humanoid bosses to fight, and actually took me a decent amount of tries to kill. So here we are at the final boss of the game, the secret boss, Lingering Will. Now, if you've ever seen somebody cheese this boss before with uh, Berserk Charge with Sora, you can obviously see where this is going to go with the way Riku can do his shit on the ground. But good god, look at that motherfucking damage. Also, for some reason, the very first death I had of this guy was a crash. That actually never happened again either. I don't know what the fuck's up with that one. If he ever switches his Keyblade to the bow and arrow and he ever hits you with the thing and the curse shit happens, since you can't see your command board, it's probably instant death. His other curse ability that either stops you from using MP or attack, um, I'm not sure if it really works. I don't know how he hit me with it right there because I had invincibility frames on me. But it still hit me, and I'm not sure which one I had on me. I think this is the one where the MP is unusable. I couldn't really tell because he killed me, obviously. I don't think it would really matter anyway. I don't think th those rules apply to Riku anyway since he doesn't really use a command board. But in the end, he's like every other humanoid boss. His revenge value has mysteriously disappeared, and he is infinitely staggerable. I would say that if I ever did this again, I would A, turn Donald and Goofy off, probably party members in general for the entirety of the run, if they were, you know, able to be turned off, and B, I would definitely pick a shittier character. Maybe I'll use, like, fucking Aladdin or something, because <laughs> Riku is way too strong. Um, hopefully maybe one day somebody makes a better version of this to where the bosses aren't just insanely destroyed, like their AI is not broken. But the game's pretty fragile, so I doubt that it'll ever come. So in the end of it all, the only bosses that Riku really couldn't beat were ones that the game technologically broke and didn't let him beat. That includes Demix 1, the Hydra, the Boat, Oogie Boogie's gimmick ass, the stupid fucking kids who are his gimmick kids, Jafar's sorry carpet loving ass, Ground Shaker's fat fucking ass, MCP's retarded ass fucking fight. Most of Armored Zemnus won, like basically any point before you actually get to the boss. And Dragon Zemnus, because it's the same thing as Jafar. Basically anything else he can beat. So I hope you enjoyed the way too long that this video took and all the time that I put into it for absolutely zero reason. Thanks for watching.